today we're going to begin a new topic, piecewise functions. Now, piecewise functions are literally small pieces of functions or graphs that are uh, connected, connected to make one full function. What, what are we talking about? Well, imagine that you had a function, maybe it was nothing more than just a straight line. Perhaps it was a straight line that was sloping upward. But then, partway through that graph, we change course. Maybe our function becomes horizontal. Maybe uh, it's just a straight line. And then we change course again. Perhaps uh, we continue to climb, but we climb at maybe even a, a different rate. And then when it's all over, for some reason, we want our graph uh, to, to drop, to perhaps go back down. Well, the graph that I just drew for you here, it literally has four different functions that are pieced together. And we call this a piecewise function. As you're going to learn, we can graph piecewise functions like I did here. We can write equations for piecewise functions. There's an application for piecewise functions and even some other items. What I want to do today is use this uh, first notes paper to uh, sort of introduce a piecewise function through an application problem. Now, once we're done with this, uh, as the rest of today's activity, we're going to ask you to visit the uh, link, the uh, online link to check out the Desmos activity, which will continue to help you to start to, to think about piecewise functions. So what do we have here? Uh, it appears that we have a uh, parking lot uh, problem or a parking garage problem where there's a different charge, uh, literally a different rate, depending on how many hours you're going to uh, be in the parking garage. As you can see, from zero to three hours, it's going to be $3 per hour. Again, from zero to three hours, it's going to be $3 per hour. And then from uh, four to 24 hours, the rate is only a dollar an hour. This is a classic example of a piecewise function, again, because uh, we literally have two different rates, uh, which we're going to find out are two different lines that will be pieced together. So how much does it cost? How much does it cost if you park in the garage for no hours? Well, of course, uh, it costs no dollars. Uh, if you only park for one hour, then you're in the, the $3 an hour rate. So that's going to be $3. And if you're there two hours, of course, it's six. And we know the last one's nine. Um, what if you're there for four hours or beyond? Well, now it's only a dollar an hour. Now, be careful. Don't tell me that it's going to be $4. That's kind of silly. Um, you already paid $9 for the first three hours. So we just need to add a dollar more, right? So now we're up to $10. A dollar more for the fifth hour, for the sixth hour. Now, what about for the tenth hour? Well, what you have to keep in mind is that you have uh, literally parked for seven hours, if you want to count on your fingers, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again, that would be seven hours that you parked at the dollar rate, added on to what you already paid, which was nine dollars. So, yeah, that's going to be sixteen dollars total. Sixteen dollars total. Now, if you graph this piecewise, uh, or maybe I should say this chart, although we're going to find out soon that it's going to be piecewise. If you graph this chart, it's not too hard to do. Just 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 go by a scale of one. So uh, zero, zero, and then one, three. Let's try to get this a little bit more precise. So we've got zero, zero. Uh, we've got one, three. We've got two, six, and three, nine. So uh, that, of course, is our first three hours. So then um, four hours only bumps up to ten. Five hours bumps up to six. Excuse me. Uh, four hours is at 10. Five hours is at 11. Six hours is at 12. And then if we want to go the whole way up to uh, 10 hours, we'll be up to 16. 
And maybe we want to label that just so we kind of keep track of where we were. That last dot there was at 1016. Now, as is often the case in algebra, when we plot lines, yes, we are uh, getting uh, points that are long, but it's when you connect the dots that you actually get the, the full line uh, that represents, of course, uh, that situation. So let's do that. Let's, let's connect the dots for each of these um, basically rates, uh, parking lot rates. Notice that I'm going to uh, connect even back to my point here, which maybe we should label this point also. Uh, of course, that was 3, 9, uh, where this one uh, left off. As you can see, we have literally two different types of lines here. Uh, they both have different types of slopes. And what we can start to do is think about the equations of these lines um, using what we know about y equals mx plus b. Again, whenever you write an equation, it's always y equals mx plus b. So what y, or excuse me, what slope and what y-intercept is represented by this red line? Again, what slope is represented? Well, if you go up 3 and over 1, you can see that the slope is 3. And then what y-intercept is represented, just looking at the graph, we see that it's 0. Now, it's interesting, both those numbers, 3 and 0, are actually part of my uh, parking lot situation. Specifically, we can see here that the slope is actually the charge, the hourly charge, for those first three hours. Let's write our equation. It's going to be the slope times x plus 0, plus that y-intercept. How about your slope and y-intercept for the second line? Okay, again, we did a nice job at the graph, so we can see the slope is a rise of 1 and a run of 1, which, of course, just comes out to be 1. What about the y-intercept? I want to be careful here. You don't want to tell me that the y-intercept is 4, or excuse me, 10. Um, that doesn't match with 0. And you don't want to go back and tell me that the y-inner sub zero, that, that was the one for the red line. So what is the y-intercept? Well, if you take your line backwards, if you will, you can go back to where the graph would have touched the y-axis. And what we see here is that it would have touched the y-axis at 6. Well, based on the definition of a y-intercept, we have to conclude that the y-intercepts would be 6. Now, when you write an equation for that line, you want your slope times x plus your y-intercept to be uh, your y equals mx plus b. Now, these two equations are correct, but the one thing about these two equations is that they both represent the entire line. As we are trying to uh, describe, we have part of the red line. We have part of the blue line. And so what we need to do is we need to take that idea that we have part as we describe for the first time our piecewise functions. Now when you describe piecewise function, you still use the equation. The equation is y equals 3x plus 0. But we leave out the y uh, because the piecewise function is already equal to y. And I'm not going to write the number 0. Uh, we normally don't write that anyway. So I have the equation 3x. But that equation 3x is only valid for x values that are between 0 and 3. And now we have for the first time uh, some piecewise notation. Now do you see what I did? I used a comma and I described that we're only going to use this equation 3x for numbers that are between 0 and 3. Now, the numbers that we're talking about are specifically the x values that we can see from our chart or the same x values that we see from our graph. So we always describe the x values that will be used with your piece.
Well, how about our other equation? y equals 1x plus 6. But we're not going to write y equals, and I don't need the 1 in front of the x, so it looks like I can just write x plus 6. Now, x plus 6, that is the blue equation, is only valid for these types of numbers. What kinds of numbers? Well, yes, numbers that are greater than 3. Numbers that are greater than 3. Now, if you were thinking, why not numbers that are greater than uh, uh, 4? I thought it started at 4. Well, if you go back to your graph, you can see that our blue line actually picked up where the red line left off. And so notice that my blue line picked up right here at x equals 3. So that's why I'm going to make my restriction, we call it, my restriction also pick up at 3. When we have a piecewise function written, which we officially have here, what we can do is we can use it uh, to do various things. As you're going to learn, one of the things that we do is we uh, graph it. Now, we already did graph these, but I just want to show you that when you do go uh, sort of start with a graph, it's going to be very common to want to find your starting values. And your starting value comes from plugging in the beginning of your interval. Now, if I plug 0 into this equation, I actually get the number 3. Yeah, I get the number 0. So we can say that this equation is going to begin at 0. But when I plug in 3, I actually get 9. What that means is that this one is going to end at 3, 9. Now, those two numbers, that those two values that you see there are actually the same points that were represented on this graph. Yes, we already knew that, but I just want to show you that eventually that's how you're going to analyze this piecewise function. Can we do the same thing here? Yes, we can plug in our endpoint, or you might call it your beginning point. And when I plug in 3, I also get 9. That means that my blue equation is going to begin at the point 3, 9. And as you can see, that's how uh, we drew the graph. Another thing that we can do is we can evaluate a piecewise function. Now, to evaluate a piecewise function, you'll see the notation f, the, the f notation. For example, f of 24. Now, what that really means is, let's figure out how much money it costs if you're going to park in the garage 24 hours. But what that means is we need to plug in 24. Now, the question becomes, where do I plug in 24? Do I plug it into my first piece, my first equation? Well, that equation only works for hours from 0 to 3. I'm pretty sure 24 is not between 0 and 3. Rather, it is greater than 3. So I'm going to plug 24 into my second piece because that's the piece that works for numbers like 24. You know, numbers that are greater than 3. So what happens if I plug in 24 into this equation? Well, it's not too hard to do. You just end up with 24 plus 6. Of course, that comes out to be 30. What that means is that it's going to cost $30 to park for 24 hours. It also means that the point 2430 is going to be on my graph. Now, let me see if I can find the point 2430 very carefully. I did a little bit of counting ahead of time, so I'm pretty sure that I have the right point. And if you did extend this graph very carefully, you would conclude that indeed that point is part of the blue, the blue piece. Piecewise observations. What we're doing is we're just kind of introducing piecewise functions to you. So let's make a couple observations. First of all, as we kind of said at the beginning, a piecewise function will uh, be pieces or sections of graphs. Let's use the word sections of graphs. Or uh, actually, I looked at my notes here, sections of whole graphs. We like to emphasize that originally it's a whole graph, but you're just going to have a section of that. 
uh, restricted by an x interval, by an x interval. I know that's kind of a mouthful, but if you look at what's happened in this problem, our whole graph would be the graph 3x. In other words, the entire line. But we're only going to have that line from 0 to 3. Our whole graph, our whole line would be x plus 6. We're only going to have that graph when we're greater than 3. Endpoints. Endpoints. Or beginning points, but typically we just kind of say endpoints of uh, the interval. Endpoints of the interval help piece graphs together. Endpoints of the interval help piece the graphs together. And when it comes to evaluating, you're going to evaluate by plugging, like we did with the number 24, by plugging into just one, just one equation. So whenever we want to plug in, you only ever plug into one of the equations, as you're going to learn, only one of the equations is ever going to be able to receive or work with the number that you're plugging in. Now at this time, what you want to do is find the uh, Desmos introductory activity, which is going to let you explore even a little bit more what we, how we can work with piecewise functions. And then tomorrow what we'll do is we'll pick up with this paper, basically, uh, and work through the, uh, the remainder of the questions. Okay, but you'll be able to find that video under the next uh, class lesson.